In this video today, I'm gonna to go through every single one of my Serato DJ Pro crates. So in Serato DJ Pro, we have my main crate here, 2025. I like to plan ahead. So I've organized my crates so I can be ready for next year. So if you open up 2025, um, I've got a bunch of sub crates inside there. So we've got imports, all genres, all years, opening, warm up, main set, warm down, old school, dance hall, Afro beats, Amma piano, UK funky, non club, two sort, and online work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every single one of these crates, all the sub crates inside it, and I'm going to explain why I have that crate and how I use that crate. So inside the imports crate, First of all, this is gonna be when I import new music into Serato DJ Pro. So the way I import new music into Serato DJ Pro is I use the auto import feature. So what I'll do is I'll download my music from my favorite record pool, which is Heavy Hits. If you want your first month for $4.99, use the code DJCB in the checkout. I'll download my music from Heavy Hits. And then what I'll do is I'll move all those tracks and put it into the auto import folder underneath the Serato folder. Once I open up Serato DJ Pro, it will then give me a brand new folder inside Serato DJ Pro. Then what I'll do is I'll move it into my imports folder and then it will have all my brand new music that I've just downloaded that day. Then what I'll do is I'll go through all the metadata. I'll make sure that all the tracks are updated with the correct song, the correct artist, the correct year and the correct genre. Once I've done that, I'll move it into my imports folder. So then when I'm DJing, say for example, I'm DJing next week, I can then go into my imports crate and then I can go through all the brand new music that I've downloaded. The amount of times I've been DJing, I've, I've gone into my normal crates and I forgot about all the new music I've downloaded. With the imports crate here, I I know that I can go into here and then all my new music is gonna be in there so I won't forget about any songs that I've just downloaded. So underneath all genres, I have every single genre that I have in my music library. So I've got 80s, Afro beats, I'm a piano, bass line, cheese, commercial, Christmas, dancehall, drum and bass, garage, grime, hip hop, house, jungle, Latin, lovers rock, mixes, Motown, R&B, reggae, remixes, sound effects, UK funky, UK music and warm up mixes. Having the all genres crate is a really good crate for me because Say for example, I wanna go play an Afrobeats party. I can just go into Afrobeats and all my Afrobeats tracks are in here. Say for example, I wanna play a house party. I go into my house and all my house tracks are in here. But most of the time, I don't really use these crates for DJing. I normally use these crates for organizing. So what I'll do, um, every six months or so, I'll go into all my um, genre crates. So let's, let's do hip hop, for example. I'll go into my hip hop crate and I'll order this by one. As you can see on the right hand side, I've got colors under my remixer column. So what I'll do is, Every six months to a year, I'll go through each of these tracks, start from number one, and I'll look at it and I'll be like, is this an opening track? Is this a warm up track? Is it a main set track or is it a track to delete? So if you have a look at the first one, Miss Jackson, I've got it as orange, so it's gonna be my warm up. But in six months time, I might think, you know what? It's not really good for warm up anymore. I might wanna delete it. So I might go into here, change this to black, and then I'll change this to black in here. And then what that will do is it will move it into my deleted crate, which you'll see later on in the video. So I like to go through all my genre crates every now and again, just to update and refresh my music library. Because what you don't wanna do is when you get, I don't know, two, three years into your DJ career, you're gonna have a bunch of tracks that you're not even gonna play anymore. The amount of DJs that come to me and say their music library is cluttered, it's because they haven't gone through and done a lot of maintenance. Every six months to a year, I'll go through these genre crates and go through and be like, you know what? This track isn't a warm up track anymore, I'm gonna delete it. Or this track is no longer main set, I'm gonna bring it down to warm up. It's always good to go through your music library and maintain all your tracks to make sure that your library is clean and refreshed. So like I said, I don't really use this crate much for DJing, it's more for sorting. So you can see like in my house crate, I've got the same thing. So I've got yellow, orange, green in here. And it's just a good way for me to organize my music library. So under all years, I have kind of the same thing. So I've got before 90s, 90s, 2000s, all the way into 2024. Now, again, I don't really DJ from these crates. These are more for organizing and sorting. So say, for example, I go into my, I don't know, 2010 crate. I can DJ from here. But what I tend to do is I go in here and I'm like, you know what? I've only got 221 tracks from the year 2010. So then I can go to my record pool. I can filter it by year and I can download more tracks for that year. Year. This is just a really good way to start building up your music library. If you have, I don't know, you go into 2004 and you've only got 180 tracks. Again, I can go to my I can go to my record pools and download a bunch of tracks from my record pool to update my 2004 music library. I guarantee, if you have this for your music library, it will motivate you to download more and more music. It's just a good way to build your music library. Honestly, if you have these year crates in your music library, it will actually help you build your music library. So, say for example, I go into before 90s. I've actually got quite a few tracks in here. 
here. But if I wanted to play more old school sets, more sets that have 80s music, 70s music, I can go to my record pool, download a bunch of stuff from before 90s, and I've built up my music library. So like I said, I don't really DJ from this. This is more for sorting. Now onwards, these are all the crates that I normally DJ from. So opening is one of my favorite crates. A lot of DJs always ask me, what do you start your set with? I never know what songs to play at the start. The opening crate is one of the best crates to have in your music library because inside here, I have all the tracks that I can use for opening a set. So whenever I go to a DJ set, it could be anywhere. I could be DJing a birthday party. I could be DJing a club. I could be DJing anywhere. I know that every single one of these tracks inside this crate is calm and chilled and it's not going to be played later on in the night. It's not going to be a main set track. It's not going to be a warm up track. Under here, I've got all opening. So under all opening, these are all the tracks that I have that I can play at the start of a set. So at the start of my set, I can literally go into this crate, close my eyes, scroll down, pick a track. And I know that this track here is an opening track that I can play in a club, that I can play at a party. This is just a good, this is a good crate to have because it will just remove the pressure from you at the start of your set. Having this crate is really good. And I've also split it up into genres as well. So I've got opening 80s, opening Afrobeats, opening Ama Piano, opening Cheese, commercial, dancehall, garage, house, lovers rock, Motown, reggae, R&B and hip hop. So in here, I've got it split up into before 2010 and also 2010 plus. Then I've got that for um, hip hop and R&B as well. Opening remixes, opening UK funky and opening UK mixes. So having all these different genres is really good because you won't play the same thing at the start of a set all the time. Next week, I might want to play some opening garage, but then the week after that, I might want to play some opening dancehall. The week after that, I might want to play some opening R&B. I might want to play some opening in R&B before 2010. This is just a really good way to freshen up your set and to not make you bored at the start of a set. So after opening, we have warm up. So I, I kind of have my crates set up for the flow of the night. So you've got opening, warm up, main set, warm down. So the next one is warm up. So inside warm up, is gonna be all the tracks that I'm gonna to get to build the dance floor. And inside here, I've got a bunch of sub crates that kind of split it up a little bit. So if I go into warm up, so I've got a bunch of sub crates inside warm up. So I've got warm up remixes, all warm up, retired warm up, warm up without D A A H F, which I'll go into in a minute, uh, genre warm ups old school warm up, club classics, girls and commercial dancehall. So I'm gonna go through each of these. So warm up remixes, um, I download most of my remixes from the mashup. Some of them are good, some of them are terrible. Um, some of them are only for opening sets. Um, I don't really play much, much mashups uh, for main set, but they are really good for warm ups, right? So I've got a bunch of my hand picked remixes that I really like inside warm up remixes. I've also got all warm up. So every single one of my warm up tracks are in here. So if you have a look at the smart crate rules, you can just see that it's got remix that is orange and the grouping does not contain retired. Every single track in my music library that has orange will go into here and orange in my music library means warm up. All these tracks in here are gonna be all the tracks for warm up. So I can scroll down here. I can order this by BPM. I can scroll down, pick a track and it's gonna be a warm up track. I can scroll down a bit more and I've just got a bunch of warm up tracks to get the dance floor going, to get the girls dancing, etc. Retired warm up, this is something I've introduced recently. So like I said at the start of the video, I do tend to go through my crates and maintain them and delete tracks and stuff like that. So what I'm doing in my warm up crate is I'm retiring tracks. So have you ever been at one of your DJ sets and you're scrolling, scrolling, thinking I'm never gonna play these tracks again? This is where the retired warm up crate comes into play. If I think a track is no longer a warm up, I'm gonna retire it. I'm gonna put it into my retired warm up crate. If I don't need that track after about two, three weeks of DJing, I'll delete it. So it's just good to have a little crate in there to just say these tracks are retired. And you can look through these and you're like, you know what? I don't think I'll ever play these tracks again in my warm up, so I can get rid of them. This is just a good way to clean up your music library. This MacBook is only 256 gigabytes, so I haven't got that much space, so it's always good to maintain the music library, clean it up so I can free up some more space to download some, some new music. So next we've got warm up without D-A-A-H-F. So D-A-A-H-F stands for Dancehall, Afrobeats, Ama Piano, House and Funky, right? So I play a lot of DJ sets where they only really want R&B and hip hop. So when I'm DJing, I don't want to see all my dancehall tracks, my Afro, Afro beats tracks, all my house tracks, etc. So in here, I've got all my warm up crates, but they only contain R&B, hip hop, and UK music. So if I go into all warm up here, if I have a look inside my smart crate rules, I've got remixer is orange, which means warm up. Grouping does not contain retired, and then the genre does not contain dancehall, Afro beats, house, or funky. So all the tracks in here, if you see. 
All it has is hip hop, commercial, R&B and UK music because these are the tracks that my audience only want to hear in my in the club that I play at. So there's no point of me having all my other genres in here if I'm never going to play it. So I have all the tracks in here and I've got it split up. So I've got warm up BPM ranges. So I've got tracks from 50 to 70 BPM, 70 to 80 BPM, 80 to 90, 90 to 100, etc. I like doing it like this because if I go into 50 to 70, I've only got these set tracks in here. So I'm not going to be overwhelmed with a bunch of other tracks. It's also good to have it like this as well, because if you see in here, I've only got 20 tracks in here. So I can look and be like, you know what? My warm up crate 50 to 70 needs some more tracks in it. So I can go to my record pool. I can filter it by BPM 50 to 70 and I can download more warm up tracks from there. So this is just why I like having it split up by BPM. It's good to play from so you're not overwhelmed, but it's also good to see that if you need to download some new music. So I can do a warm up before 2010, uh, 2011 to 2018 or 2018 plus. So the reason why I do it like this is because I might have a crowd in front of me that is a lot older. So I can play a warm up that's with older music. I might have a crowd that's a bit mixed so I can play 2011 to 2018. And say for example, I've got a crowd that's just a bunch of 18 year olds, don't care about the older music. I can play my warm up from here and all these tracks are more up-to-date tracks that they'll like. Because the amount of times I've played at a DJ set and there's 18-year-olds in there and you play a track from, I don't know, 2004, that's when they were born. So they have no idea about it. So it's always good to have this crate in here. Then I've also got Urban Warm Up. So in here, I've just got it split up by 2010 plus and 2018 plus. Then I've just got um, 2010 Warm Up UK, Hip Hop, R&B. Then 2018 Hip Hop UK and R&B. So say, for example, I want to play just 2010 Hip Hop tracks. I can go into here and all the tracks are in here. If I want to play 2018 UK tracks, I can go into here and all my tracks are in here. It is just all about not having too many tracks in front of you when you've got to select tracks. So that is warm up without D-A-A-H-F. Then we've got genre warm ups. So in here, just have all my different types of warm ups. So I've got R&B, hip hop, UK, Afrobeats, dancehall, commercial, house, Latin, remix, and UK funky warm up. Let's say for example, I wanna play more UK warm up tracks. I can just jump into here and play here. If I wanna switch it and just play some dance or warm up, I can just jump into here as well. It's just a good way to split up my crates just in case I look at the dance floor and there's more people enjoying more dancehall tracks. I know to go into my dancehall warm up and play more of that. I've also got old school warm up. So I've just got old school R&B warm up and old school hip hop warm up. So normally most DJs tend to play like an old school R&B warm up. I can literally go into here and stay in this crate for however long and not have to worry about it because all my old school R&B uh, warm up tracks are in here. Club classics. This is a really good crate of mine. Um, this is pretty much all the floor filler tracks. Anything in here can get people on the dance floor, right? So if I scroll down, you got Feel the Love Rudimental, scroll down again. We got Hit Em Up Two Pack. We got Juicy Notorious B.I.G. All these tracks in here are good floor fillers to get people up off, up on their feet and onto the dance floor. Um, I've got it split up by all Club Classics and then Club Classics 2017. Like I said, if I've got a younger crowd in front of me, I can go into here and play more up-to-date floor fillers. And the next one I think is one of the most important crates ever, the girls crate. To build a dance floor, you need girls on the dance floor. Inside here, I have every single track to get girls dancing, right? So if I scroll down, Gangsta Love and Leisha Keys, scroll down, Do It Again, Pia Mia, scroll down, Sorry Justin Bieber. All these tracks in here, girls love. If, if you play some of these tracks, you can guarantee that the girls are gonna be nodding their head, tapping their feet or getting up and dancing, right? So to build a dance floor, I'll give you a small tip here. To build a dance floor, all you need to do is get the girls on the dance floor. And then once the girls are on the dance floor, the guys will follow and you'll start to build a bigger dance floor. Then when you've got the guys and the girls on the dance floor, you can play your floor fillers to keep everyone happy. And then that's your warm up done. And then you can get into your main set where you can play the more up to date tracks to get everyone excited and happy. Quite straightforward, nice little tip for you there. And then commercial dance hall in here is well, it's quite a, it's quite a good crate for me because I play a lot of commercial venues and a lot of people always ask me for dance hall. They say they want dance hall, but then you play some hardcore vibes cartel and then next thing you know, they're like, they don't know what this is. So commercial dance hall in here is for all the people that think they like dance hall, but they don't really like dance hall dance hall. So if I go into here, I've got Murder, She Wrote, we've got Rum and Red Bull, Hold You, Egyptian, Toast, Get Busy, Sean Paul. All your Sean Paul tracks are going to be in here. So this is just a good crate to also get 
people dance on the dance floor because everyone loves a bit of dance hall, whether you like the deep dance hall or the really commercial dance hall, people love dance hall and it's a really good genre to get people on the dance floor. Right, so that's the warm up done. So we've got main set. I got my main set crate split up into two sub crates. So we've got main set and main set retired. Main set retired is the exact same thing I said about the warm up crate. So I'll go through my main set tracks every six to 12 months. And if I feel like they're not main set tracks anymore, I'll retire them. If I don't feel like I need them after about two, three weeks, I'll delete them from my music library. So main set retired in here, like I said, it's just all the tracks in here. So I don't really need to go through this. We've got main set without dancehall, Afrobeats, house, funky and remixes. So if I go into here, I've got all my main set tracks in here. So whenever I jump into main set, I normally start in here. I'll pick one main set track and then I'll kind of just figure out as I go along. Then I've also got main set BPM ranges. This is how I play my main set. I'll decide if I want to play 50 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100 or 100 plus, And then I'll stay in there. So most of the time when I do main set, I'll normally be inside 70 to 80 because that's going to be all your hard hip hop, like your pop smoke stuff and stuff like that. So I'll go into here order it by BPM, and then I'll just pick a track, Dojo Central C, then I'll just work my way down. I can play Bam for Bam, Whoopty, Clash, Woi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is just a good crate to be inside. And then if I want to go to 80s, 90, I can jump into here and then play all my tracks in here. As you can see, I don't have that many main set tracks in here because I don't like being overwhelmed during my main set. Main set is a really... It's a lot of pressure, so you need to make sure you have your crates nice and clean. So when you jump into it, you know exactly what you're going to play. So I've got main set without dancehall, Afrobeats, hip hop, funky and remixes. But then I've also got my main set crate with everything inside it. So I've got all my hip hop tracks that are main set, all my UK tracks, R&B, a dancehall, Afrobeats and, and I'm a piano. So hip hop and UK music is split up even more. So I've got hip hop main set, then I've also got hip hop main set with loops and tricks. So say for example, I go into here and I wanna do a loop or a trick, all these tracks in here have a saved loop or I have a trick that I have saved in my head, right? So I know if I wanna do something funky on the decks, I can come into this crate here. And it's the exact same thing inside UK music. So I've got my UK main set tracks in here, then I've got any tracks in here that I've got loops or any tricks in here, go into here. The loops and tricks crate is just a good way to stay creative during your DJ sets. And then this last crate here, bait artist. So in the club that I play at, they like a lot of Playboy Carti and a lot of Travis Scott. Now, I'm not up to date with all the Playboy Carti tracks and the Travis Scott tracks. So I've put all the tracks inside here for the artist. And then I'm, I'm trying to get to know the tracks a bit more. So before my DJ sets, I'll go through, listen to these, and I'll try and introduce new tracks to my crowd because I know they love these two artists, but I don't necessarily love them that much. But because my, my audience like it, I'm making an effort to get to know the tracks a little bit more. Warm Down, I'm building up on this. So if you, if you see in here, I haven't got that many tracks in here, but Warm Down, so when it comes to the end of the set, um, you don't want to play too much hype and upbeat music because people will start fights and you want to kind of get people out of the club. So I've got it split up into all warm down, R&B warm down, hip hop warm down and UK warm down. Old school, these are all my old school genres. Um, so I've got old school R&B, old school hip hop, old school dancehall, UK funky, garage, grime, lovers rock, 80s and Motown. And under each one, they're split up into three categories. So I've got green, orange and yellow. Yellow means opening, Orange means warm up and green means main set. So say for example, I want to do an old school R&B party. I can go into here and I can literally stay in this crate all night. So I can go into yellow and that can be all my opening tracks for my old school R&B party. Then when people start to come in and they want to start dancing, I can go into my orange, which is all my warm up tracks. And then when it gets to the peak of the night, I can go inside green and play all the bangers. I've just got it split up like that, nice and simple. And I've got it for every single crate in here. So say if I want to do a, a hip hop party, I've got the same. Uh, if I want to do dancehall, UK funky, garage, etc. And then underneath here, so I've got dancehall, Afro beats, and I'm a piano and UK funky. So these four genres, I'm trying to get better at. Now, I'm my speciality is kind of being an open format DJ, but if you want to be, I don't know, a dancehall DJ or an Afrobeats DJ, you need to be a specialist in it and you need to kind of know your music. And these, this is what this crate's for. So if, let me just close the old school one. If I go inside dancehall, I've got all my dancehall tracks and they are split up into green, orange, and yellow. 
And say, for example, I want to play a dancehall party. Again, like I said about the old school party, I can go into here. I can start with all my opening tracks, main set and green tracks. Now, I'm trying to get a lot better at these four genres. Um, so what, I'm gonna, what I tend to do is when I'm at home, I'll practice and I'll start to get to know more the dancehall tracks, the Amma Piano tracks and the Afrobeats tracks. Um, so, yeah, so inside here are all the, the big bangers of dancehall. I don't know them inside out. But having this crate here will help me to get to know the music and listen to it a bit more so I can understand the genre a bit more and get a lot better at it. Non-club has only got one crate in there. I DJ with a saxophonist and these are all the tracks that he likes to play on his saxophone. So I just had these in the crate, quite straightforward. And then into sort, I have all the tracks that have no years, all the tracks that have no yellow, green or orange. I've got all the tracks in here that I want to delete out of my music library. And then I've also got this crate in here where all these tracks in here have no plays. All the tracks in here, I've never played in any of my DJ sets. So what I'm going to do is after about six months or so, I'm going to go through this crate. And honestly, if I've not played any of these tracks for the rest of the year, I'm going to delete them, free up some space and start downloading some new music on my music library. And then online work is just a bunch of stuff that I'm doing for YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that. So yeah, so that is my 2024, 2025 crate walkthrough. If you want to get this exact crate structure, check the link in the description down below. Also, if you want to know what tracks are inside each of these crates, check the link in the description down below. You can find that all out there. So yeah, so now that you've watched this video, check this video out here.